Hey y'all, hey. Today we are reading Down to the Sea with Mr. McGee. Mr. McGee and his little dog Dee loved spending time in their boat on the sea. So early one morning at 6.32, they made a decision that's just what they do. Right after breakfast, McGee packed a lunch, sandwiches, carrots, a thermos of punch, a big box of raisins, some sweet pickled beets, chocolate chip cookies, and crunchy dog treats. With plans for the day and enough lunch for three, they hopped in the car and drove down to the sea. The pair left the dock at seven o'clock and motored their way around Eagle Egg Rock. They passed by the lighthouse and by the old wreck with McGee at the wheel and Dee on the deck. They suddenly spied off the bow to the east a big pod of whales. There were 50 at least, splashing about in the bright morning sun, feasting on shrimp and sardines by the ton. But one little whale who had eaten his fill, munching on minnows and plankton and krill, was bored with his breakfast. And since he was through, he swam off in search of something to do. Now Dee and McGee in their boat on the bay didn't notice the whale that was heading their way. They were watching the other whales put on a show and soon that young whale was directly below. From under the sea, the little whale spied McGee and Dee's boat, but not them inside. He longed for adventure. He wanted to play. So he bumped at the boat in a most friendly way. Then the whale placed his blowhole directly below, and ever so gently, he started to blow. McGee saw the bubbles, he felt the boat sway, then up went the boat on a fountain of spray. Higher and higher the little boat flew, as harder and harder that little whale blew. Then the whale blew a blast as hard as he could, much harder in fact than a little whale should. And that final blast blew the boat up in the sky, first, th first 30, then 40, then 50 feet high. The boat kept on rising, but it didn't stop there. Wind hit it hard and it flew through the air. Dee and McGee sailed over the sea when all of a sudden, they got stuck in a tree. So there they were, stranded, McGee and his pup in the top of a spruce, 60 something feet up.
from their perch in the sky, the two watched in dismay as the whale far below swam swiftly away. McGee was downhearted. Just what could he do? They seemed hopelessly stuck, but little D knew. The secret to get the boat safely unpinned was to rock back and forth and wait for the wind. So they rocked and they rocked for an hour or so, but the boat didn't budge cause the wind didn't blow. Just when they thought they'd be stuck there all night, they spotted far off a spectacular sight. You ate all your food? No, I just want chips. You eat all your food? I might consider giving you some chips. Yeah, it's not bad, Stephanie. You're not kidding me. Away in the distance, across the blue bay, the whales, all 50, were heading their way. They swam through the water in one long, straight row and gathered around the small island below. McGee looked down at the circle of whales surrounding the island and raising their tails. He felt a bit nervous, a little bit tense, when all of a sudden, it made perfect sense. They're trying to save us, he shouted with glee. Hold on, D, hold on, as tight as can be. Their tail slapped down with a thunderish crash, which in turn created a super high splash that covered the island and raced up the tree and dislodged the boat and set them both free. D was so happy, she let out a yelp. McGee tipped his hat to the whales for their help. Thank you, my friends, for saving the day. Then they all waved goodbye and the whales swam away. On the way home, little D had a thought. What about all of the food they had brought? In all the excitement, they ate not a bite. So they saved it and had it for dinner that night. The end. Down to the sea with Mr. McGee.